Nasal congestion may not seem like a big problem until you have it. And if you block one side of your nose with your finger and you try breathing in and out, you can quickly learn how much nasal obstruction can be bothersome. There are several different causes of nasal obstruction. The most common would be a deviated septum. The septum is the thing that splits the middle of the nose and divides it into the right and left sides. And sometimes due to trauma or just vigorous activity or even being the family nose, sometimes that nasal septum is deviated or twisted to one side or the other. The other structures inside the nose are called turbinates and there are sets of three on each side of the nose. The lower or inferior turbinates experience the most contact with the air and their purpose is to warm and humidify the air we breathe as well as to direct some of the airflow up higher up into the nose to assist our smell function. On occasion, the inferior turbinates can become enlarged. Sometimes they're enlarged due to allergies or if the septum is deviated to one side, sometimes the turbinate grows to fill the space vacated by the deviated septum. That's called compensatory hypertrophy. Regardless of the cause, when medicine doesn't work to shrink those turbinates, such as nasal steroid sprays, the next option are various surgical procedures to shrink the size of those turbinates. We try to preserve turbinate tissue to assist with humidification of the nose. So the procedure I tend to use is called a submucosal resection of the inferior turbinate. Another technique is radiofrequency ablation to the inferior turbinate. And the decision of what type of turbinate reduction I recommend is based on that patient's particular symptoms and their specific anatomy. Turbinate reductions can be performed in the office under local anesthesia or it can be done in the operating room under a general anesthesia. It's relatively easy to get a good result after septoplasty or turbinate reduction surgery. It's simply because of a physics principle that states airflow through a tube or the nose is directly related to the fourth power of the radius of that tube, which simply means if I improve this space within the nose by even a little bit, the airflow dramatically increases. Patients who have this procedure, whether or not it's in the operating room or in clinic, generally take a couple days off of work. There can be some bleeding afterwards, but most of the time I don't put any packing in the nose and patients leave the operating room or the clinic breathing well. The pain is usually mild. Most patients will take a combination of Tylenol and Advil for a few days after this surgical procedure. This is a very rewarding surgery for me to do because it has such a dramatic impact on the quality of life of my patients. It's truly amazing how a small surgical procedure can impact their quality of life so significantly and often patients come back and they say, I can breathe and that's just a nice feeling to have.